This brings us to Free Hat. Uh, Free Hat is, a, a, again, a bit of an older episode from 2002, I think, uh, season six, maybe. Okay, um, listen, there's no secret that Matt and Trey love Star Wars. There's no secret that I love Star Wars. A lot of us older heads love Star Wars. Uh, but we're afraid... <laughs> We're afraid of what the owners of Star Wars may do with Star Wars. Now, this all started with episodes one through three. This is when uh, George Lucas in um, you know the er early 2000s, late 90s, put out the first three Star Wars, and he had gotten this huge love affair with uh, CGI, gotten away from practical effects, um, and it was horrible. It was traumatizing. That shit was the Jar Jar Binks stuff. I mean, this is so, 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 so bad. So they're obviously lampooning that. I mean, they're they're just going after after the fact of those how bad those those new Star Wars movies were. So that was sort of their impetus behind um, making this. Now at the time too, there was the re 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 releases of uh, movies, as you'll see. Um, and these were like digitally enhanced, so they did this for Star Wars, they did this for E.T., um, you know, etc. And oftentimes to make movies not only cooler, make their graphics cooler, um, you know, less primitive, so to speak, but it was also to make films more politically uh, correct. So like a film from the 80s to bring it up to the standards of political correctness, which really... I hope I emphasized this a couple of weeks back. They change over time. They change with demo, uh, g generations. What what is politically correct is a generational um, sort of decision that's that's made in society and culture. So they look at how trying to be PC and make films PC uh, all, often changes the narrative, and I'll talk about that in a few seconds. And the real question here, though, is our movies art and how what happens when you change that? What happens when you go back and you give, uh, you know, the cops in E.T., they replace their guns with walkie talkies. We replace words like what does that mean for like, you know, the history of a film where you're, you're you can go back and take the original prints and you can change them like they tried to do with um, with uh the Indiana Jones uh, movies. So, I mean, again, like the question is, can you change art? And the whole campaign is, you know, save films from their, uh, from their directors. So, I mean, what Steven Spielberg and George Lucas were doing, the films at the time, uh, Matt and Trey objected to, okay? And they really objected to this notion of improving history, that like by improving these films, you're improving or changing history. And there's maybe... A value to keeping things historical. Okay, uh, so there's a lot of intertextuality and self-reflexivity in this. So if we want to think about intertextuality, look at all of the references to the movies, but particularly Raiders of the Lost Ark. But you have you have Nightline that the that the boys end up on um, for their cause. Um, but self-reflexively, you know, I mean, um, <laughs> I love the scene actually. You know where they're where they're. It's like the play on the Lost Ark, where they look at the the Holy Grail and everybody melts and all, all that stuff. It's so brilliant, well done. Um, and the guys really love their Indiana Jones too, um, as we see in later episode, the China Problem, uh, where um, you know their whole idea is that uh, <clears throat> you know Spielberg and uh, George Lucas are. Uh, raping Indiana Jones, you know, taking full advantage of that franchise by making the Dark the dark Crystal, I think it was, whatever that horrible piece of detritus was. Um, but there's a lot of intertextual references. I love the live action part where Matt and Trey come in and they talk about improving on, um, <laughs> on the original South Park, the first episode with new super cool animation. And the reason why they used cardboard was because they had to. I mean, again, this is all just super roasting um, Spielberg and George Lucas for what they did. You see these images here? Here's the original E.T. Where, you, where they have the guns 
and then they have walkie talkies um, and you can see how they point that out in in the initial trailer where the boys are in the uh, in the studio okay so let's watch this we're gonna we're gonna watch this episode um, free hat okay obviously we know like the joke becomes about this serial baby killer whose hat but um, you know the idea is is you know the boys have a cause which is to save movies from their directors it speaks though to a lot of things like controlling the industry expanding markets via generations by making things more culturally sensitive etc um, and you know and and that brings up an interesting concept is you know who owns what not necessarily who actually owns the right or the copyrights to something but who owns the stories in films because you know go back to Kristeva and intertextuality like we are the authors and what happens when the quote-unquote author whoever owns it or whoever can't goes back and changes the story you know how does that impact things uh, for us so I think that's an important part to think about so think about how they they address that here how the um, you know how there's a lot you know the plays on intertextuality uh, and how it's so specific to roasting and ripping on Spielberg and George Lucas then we'll talk about the film industry itself and how it works with a crazy fucking graphic. <laughs> 